Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. We're here in the beautiful San Rafael Pixel Core Studios, and we're looking at not Final Cut, Motion, the new yeah. Motion 5.3. So Final Cut's 10.3, Motion's 5.3. I wonder if it'll always stay exactly five behind, like the little brother that never <laughs> gets <laughs> gets closer. <laughs> but so anyway, um, Motion has a couple new features. You know, it's got a new UI and a couple new features. And I want to show one in particular that I love, and it relates directly to Final Cut Pro. Excellent. Okay, so I'm going to jump right in here. Uh, you can already see in the Project Browser when you launch Motion, there's a new flat interface, very much like Final Cuts. Mm -hmm. I'm going to select a new title because that's what I'm going to create here. I'm going to select these preset and frame rate, and just click Open. And I'm selecting a title because this is a Final Cut title that I'm going to publish to Final Cut Pro. And I don't care about this title background here. I'm just going to turn it off. And I'm actually going to delete the default text and create my own. Shift Z to feed everything to the window and T for the text tool. And I'm just going to type Mac Break Studio here. Escape. And in the heads up display, I'll make it a little bigger. And I'll also center align it. Now, here's what I want to do here is I want this to have a little background. So I'll, I'll hit R for the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle. I'm purposely making it the wrong size. And I'll show you why here. Escape. I'll give this a, a fill color and command left bracket just to move it below in the stacking order so it's below MacBreak Studio. Now, here's where things are kind of interesting. With that rectangle selected, under the Behaviors pop-up menu, and I'm not giving you a full dive on the UI, everything's kind of moved around. Sure. The same thing's there, but uh, primary interface things are up top and objects, and then down below, it'll open up the timeline just so that this strip below the canvas opens up, and this strip is all of the tools that allow you to change things in the canvas. But I like to keep that timeline closed just to get out of the way and have a nice big screen to work with here. So with that rectangle selected, I'm going to go to this pop-up menu, which is a shortcut to grab your behaviors. And under the basic motion category, we have a new align to. Nice, right at the top. A it's for align. A align for align. It's basic and it's simple and it's really powerful. So I'm going to select it, and in the heads-up display, it says, "Sure, I'll align this rectangle. What do you want me to align it to?" There's a little drop well. I'm going to drop the text in there, and it says, "Bang, okay, I'll do that." And you can see by default, it aligns the center of the rectangle to the center of the text. We have a lot of options. You can align its anchor point, left, right, top, bottom, the corners, anything you can choose here to align. Like if we do upper left, it'll jump over there. And then I can align it to the text. I can say, well, I want to align it to the, oh, the baseline of the text. Wow, or, so if you, if you move that rectangle, it'll, all that text will move with it. That's wherever it's aligned to. Yeah, wherever it's aligned, you, can, you have all these choices on how to set it up. So it's very, very powerful. I'm going to go for the defaults here just for center, and I'll show you why. But I just wanted to point out you've got a lot of options. So mm -hmm. this is a really, really flexible. So now that it's aligned, no matter what I do with the text, that'll stick to it, yeah, which sticky. is really kind of cool. It's nice. And you can also choose to have it change over time. There's a transition, which is none by now. But if you say, for instance, oh, ease both, then that will, and let's start with it, um, let's start with it angled a little bit. What'll happen now is over time it'll move into place, oh, nice. which is cool. So it opens up a lot of animation options. But what I'm going to do here is keep that set to none because for this particular case, I don't care about that. But what I do care now is it's aligned and follows it, but it's really not the same size. So that's what we're going to handle next. If I go into the inspector with the rectangle selected to the shape inspector, uh, under geometry, it has a size. And if I open that up, there's both width and height, but I can do these together. So under the pop-up menu here, I'm going to choose to add a parameter behavior called link. Nothing new about the link parameter behavior. Right, but but using conjunction with a yeah. line, it's powerful. Well, and, and, <laughs> and I shouldn't say nothing new. It's been there, but it has new features right. that, that allow you to do interesting new things, not only with a line, but with other things as well. So. It also has a drop wall. Okay, what do you want me to link to? Well, I want you to link to the text. So I'm going to drag that here in the inspector. And then I want it to link to what attribute of the text? Well, the object, the size, all. So I'll choose that. And right away. Wow, just like that. Yeah, it, it, it adjusts. So now, n not only wherever I move it, but wherever it says, it will adjust. That's fantastic. Okay, it adjusts perfectly. And not only that, there's more, because <laughs> you can say, well, that, that link is great, but I don't want quite the same, you know, it's a little tight there. 
so you have offsets and you can adjust how um, how wide and how tall it is if you want a little bit of padding you've got these offsets that you can work with so really easy to do now Here's a cool thing is I want to publish this to Final Cut, right? Mm -hmm. And by default, I'll be able to change the text, but I'd like to actually, not actually, I'd like to publish some additional parameters. So like the color of that little background? Yeah, yeah, sure. Let's publish the color. So I can just find things that are interesting to me. Mm -hmm. So I go to the style, and there's the fill color. So let's choose publish for that. And I won't do it here, but you can add an outline, make an optional outline, do some more things. But let's also adjust the roundness. So I'm going to right click on roundness and choose publish. Yeah, you got to have rounded rectangles. Have absolutely, rounded, yeah. absolutely. And then because of this link, we could adjust these offsets. Let's publish these offsets as well so that we can choose in Final Cut to give a little more or, or pad, less padding. Or padding yeah. right. We don't need an on screen control. Like in previous versions of Motion and Final Cut, if you wanted to move things on the screen, you need to create an on screen control and publish it. And sure. from a developer perspective, it's a lot more work. No need to do that here. If I select the project now and look at the uh, published parameters here in the inspector, there's everything we published. Right. And uh, I can rename these. So I could just call this width, box width. Right. It's always helpful for Final Cut Pro users to know what each of those parameters is going to affect. Yeah, and by renaming them, <clears throat> I can make them more obvious what they're doing. Yep. So I can easily rename these, and I can easily reorganize them sure. any way I want. Great, so let's do that. I'm going to hit Save, and I'm going to uh, give this a new category. So I'll give it a new category, and I'll call this Mac Break, strangely enough. Create. And then I'll give this template a name, and I'll call it MB uh, Box, and publish it. Now, as soon as I do that, I've already got Final Cut Pro running. Uh, I'll go to Final Cut, and up in the top left now, where the title and generator sidebar is, if I go up there, there's my new category. Let's see, I'm in generators. Let's right. go to titles. Right. OK, uh, Mac break. And there, there's my new title. There it is. So I'll just tap E to drop it into an empty project here. And in the inspector, Command 4, I have access to each of these controls now. So I can change nice. the color. I can change the roundness. And if I change the text here, it, it auto, automatically auto conforms the background to the, to the text. Wow, look at that. Yeah. And because the text can be moved, the box will move with it that's, automatically. That's amazing. So quick and easy way to create uh, titles for Final Cut. Anybody who, who, who uses Final Cut Pro can use Motion to do this. It's right. a simple thing. It's a great way to dive in and get used to Motion. Um, we'll also publish this as a uh, free uh, little plug-in with some animation options. So it will animate on right. because I didn't do that here. But I just want to get an idea of this right. align to behavior and how, how powerful it is. Align to with Link. Align to with Link, yes. That's together, right. together, together. Good teammates, yes. All right, excellent. Uh, fantastic new feature in Motion. If you do uh, you know, titles, generators, and effects, or what have you in Motion for publishing, this is this amazing, amazing tool. Uh, Mark, by now, should have Getting Started in Motion. We should have it on our website now. And if you're new to Motion, you definitely want to watch this. It's a great place to start learning Motion. And then we're continually updating our Motion tutorials, of which there are 17 hours. Yeah. Uh, we are going to do it. Uh, but we have a lot, lot in store for you in the next coming months. Uh, Continue to follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and uh, of course, we do read, read your emails. And uh, thank you very much for watching another episode of MacBreak Studio.